小林光です私は長年環境行政の行政官をしておりました生物学の専門ではないんですけれども今日の受賞者ティルマン先生との対談の相手役をさせていただきますティルマン先生ですけれどもミネソタ大学アメリカのミネソタ大学の先生でいらっしゃいますこのブループラネット賞の29回目の受賞者になりますブループラネット賞では50これまでですけれども56人の人そして組織が受賞されているんですけれどもこの功績の観点でありますが地球環境を守るということで学問を進展させるあるいは社会的な運動を進めるというようなことの著名な方々でございますそういった方々の業績を一層世間に広めてそして持続可能な社会づくりを進めていこうということでございますで、実はですねこれまでの方々どんな方々がいるかと言いますとすでにここに後ろの背景にありますけれどもお写真並んでいます本当にその有名な環境分野では有名な方々のお写真が並んでいるわけですがすでにティルマン先生のお写真もここに飾られているということでございます先生の受賞の理由ですけれども人間の健康そして農業そして食習慣といったようなことの三つをこう一緒に考えて、そして持続可能性につなげていこうという特に実証的な研究でございます。まあ先生の生い立ちとかそういうことにつきましては別のサイトがございますのでぜひ見ていただきたいというふうに思っております。で今日はまあ私が代表してインタビューをさせていただきますけれども、まあ本来コロナがなければ先生に日本に来ていただきまして。授賞式に臨んでいただきそして会場の人たちと直接まあディスカッションもできるということになっていたわけでありますけれども大変残念な事態であります私は代わって代表質疑をさせていただくということになろうかと思いますぜひ聞いてってくださいよろしくお願いしますそれではあの最初の質問をしたいと思います。まずあの生物多様性という言葉があります。まあ日本でもみんな言葉としては知ってるんですが、なかなかその大切さを実感するっていうことはできないと思うんです。その生物多様性っていうのが大事なんだっていうことをこう一般の人にわかりやすく説明していただけますでしょうか。Well, let me start by just taking a big look at where we live. We live on this big blue planet, and this、uh, planet has a very unique feature the existence of life. And the defining feature of that life is its incredible diversity. We don't know how many species are on Earth, but we guess there are at least five million different species living on this planet. How and why the world came to have that many species has been one of the big mysteries of, of science. We are now Getting closer and closer to an answer to that mystery.、Um, and this really gets at why biodiversity matters. Research over the last two decades、uh, suggests that each species, when it evolved on Earth,、uh, did so because it filled some unique role in an ecosystem. It did something better than any other species in that ecosystem could do it. And because it was better at that one thing,、uh, it was able to increase in abundance in that ecosystem, this new species. But it gained that ability to do that thing very, very well, better than anything else could do it, by having to give up other abilities. So the world is diverse, has so many species, because all species, for a long, long time, hundreds of millions of years, Have faced unavoidable trade offs. To do something better, they unavoidably had to do something not so well. That meant each species was a specialist. Now, I think for a broad audience, we all know our societies and our economies, and our economy is very similar to the economy of nature.、Uh, in our economy, each of us spends lots of our lifetime gaining. Skills to have some career, some profession, something we do well. 
someplace where we fit into the economy of humanity, just like each species fits into the economy of nature. And if you wonder why biodiversity matters, it matters for the same reason that the hundreds of different professions that we have matter in our society. You know, what would our life be like if we lost only four or five or six professions? What if we lost airline pilots and that profession went extinct? No one could fly an airplane. What if we lost surgeons? What if we lost accountants? No one could keep track of money. Um, what if we lost farmers? Uh, what if we lost teachers? We lose a few professions. It's like losing a few species in an ecosystem, and our society does not work very well. And so it is really for that reason that losing species from ecosystems has such a great effect. Each species was evolved to do something uniquely well. Without that species, that job does not get done very well. And the more and more species that are lost, the lower the biodiversity of an ecosystem, the less well it should function. ありがとうございます大変あの実験をされて、えー、実証的にそういった多様性が大事だっていうのを数字で示したことは本当にあの尊敬をしています、えー、ただあの人間の方はですねそういった多様性を損なうことをどんどんしてますねで人間はそのなんていうか他の生物に対して、まあ、どういう位置にあるって言いますか人間のいいところと悪いところをもし先生の目からあの説明していただければあの大変ありがたいと思います。Well, I would say the worst things about people to start with that is that we are the only species ever known on earth that cause another species to go extinct. Now, we did that because we actually also have some very good qualities. We learn things and we educate the next generation about them. And we treasure knowledge and we pass it on from year to year, generation to generation, century after century. We're reverent about knowledge. We love it. We, we really, it's a very important part of who we are as a species. Now, the reason we have gained the ability. That no other species had the ability to be so good at our way of living that we caused other species to go extinct was because of this knowledge that we gained. The first sign of this,、uh, I like to give a story about species that are different from us. Most species I, I said a few minutes ago、uh, coexist because they're different. Each one is a specialist, they all have trade offs. Well, let's talk about a different specialist for a minute.、Uh, we all know the fierce saber toothed cats that used to live on Earth.、Um, and these saber toothed cats became the best predator of very large animals that the Earth had had. And they did it by having very long teeth, big claws, very strong muscles in their upper body.、Um, and by doing that, they became very good at doing one thing, but they no longer could hunt for small prey. Now, people are born. With a, a medium sized body, we don't have long teeth, we don't have claws, we don't have big muscles.、Um, we could never have killed a large mammal without knowledge.、Um, and what we did slowly but surely, we gained the knowledge of how to turn stones into things that were sharp. We put sharp stones on the end of sticks, we made spears, and these spears became like a saber tooth on the end of a stick. And we could kill a large animal. Without endangering our lives. A saber toothed cat had to grab onto the animal and try to kill it. We can throw the spear from far away. And we became better than all saber toothed cats and all other big predators at killing off prey. And we killed off so many prey to feed ourselves that the saber toothed cats died out. They went extinct. And that was the beginning of a whole series of extinctions around the world that humans have been causing because we gained skills. That break these trade offs. We don't have the body to be a predator, but we have the mind to figure out how to do it. And what is happening now, the good side of all of this, now that we realize the incredible power that we have, now that we realize that humans are the most potent species ever to live on Earth, we also have the knowledge and the wisdom to look at what we are doing. To understand what it means and to change how we live so that we keep on Earth all those other species that we need to keep this planet functioning for us and keep it a livable place, 
not just for us, uh, but for the next generation, for 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now, and I dare say 10,000 or even a million years. Most species that evolve on Earth live for many millions of years before they go extinct. Humans are only about a million years old, even less if you, depending on who you ask the question of. Um, so I do hope that we can understand the implications of our incredible gift of knowledge and of reverence for wisdom and, and knowledge and passing it on to discovery and use that to handle what is really a unique situation that we are, where we are the all-powerful species on Earth. あ、やってこられたその食習慣、環境、そして農業ですかね。あるいは人間の健康。こういったものの、その3つの関係について、どういうふうな食習慣を人々にこう教育していきたいのか、そこら辺を教えていただけますか。Well, um it's a wonderful question and an area of a lot of interest and importance. First, we face a problem, and as I call it a trilemma. A trilemma is a problem where there are three linked issues, all of which uh, Im impacts the other one. So we have this three linked issue because of the kinds of foods we like to eat, our diet, our health, which is impacted by that, and the environment, which is packed, impacted by agriculture, which is driven by our diet. So these are all tightly interlinked. And we have a problem right now that is growing around the world. The problem is the choices we make on, on what we eat are causing a major, what is called global burden of disease. Our dietary choices are now the major cause of harm to health on average all around the world. And it's causing diseases like diabetes, stroke, heart disease, um, uh, and some cancers. So the, what is really interesting in, in having explored this issue is how these things are linked. And the, and the diagram you're showing shows those links. The foods, it turns out, the foods that are worst for the environment, which tend to be red meat and processed red meats, are also the ones that are worst for our health. And the foods that are best for our health, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, uh, nuts, uh, are some of the best foods for the environment. And so we have a chance by changing our diet uh, to um, have two very beneficial outcomes of it. Uh, we will improve our own health, uh, and uh, we will improve the livability of the earth. The environmental effects of agriculture are really quite large. Let me make a point about just climate change in agriculture. If somehow today we could stop all combustion of coal and gas, uh, oil and all other natural, all other um, fossil fuels, if we could stop all fossil fuel combustion today, just the emissions that come from agriculture uh, would cause the whole world to exceed the two degrees Celsius limit that the uh, Paris Accord says uh, we really have to achieve. 30% of all greenhouse gases come from agriculture. It comes from land clearing, it comes from uh, ruminants like cattle, um, it comes from rice emitting it, it comes, uh, uh, it comes um, from nitrogen fertilizer, which leads to the formation of nitrous oxide, a very potent greenhouse gas. It comes from using fossil fuels in agriculture. 30% of our emissions come from that. And if we don't change our agricultural trajectories, if we don't change our diets, and if we don't change how we grow crops to become much more efficient, not have to clear so much land and all the greenhouse gas that, re that puts in the air, we're gonna cause massive climate change even if we got rid of all fossil fuels. Not many people realize this issue. It is a very serious issue from food. Uh, and I, and I, the good news is that changing diets, changing how we do agriculture uh, can in fact prevent this and can greatly reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. ありがとうございます。えっと、その場合 2つ、ま、論点があると思うんですが、1つは 
その農業っていうその供給側がやるべきこととそれからもう一つあの食べる人あの何て言うか食事をする人たちがまあするべきことと二つ見方があると思うんですがそれぞれについて具体的にこういうふうにした方がいいこう変えた方がいいっていうのことがあったら教えてください。Thank you. It's a very good question.、Um, the supply side,、uh, we know much about how agriculture can be efficient, more efficient than it is. For instance, a, a recent study done in China that involved more than a million small landowning farmers、uh, showed that the typical farmer could get the same and actually slightly higher yields than they were right now while adding about 30% less nitrogen and fertilizer. This happened because they were adding too much of it at the wrong time for their crops. By adding the right amount at the time when the crop actually needs it, Almost all of that fertilizer will be taken up by the crop and it won't have a chance to pollute the groundwater. It won't have a chance to form nitrous oxide and go in the air and be a greenhouse gas. So, and that's not the only study. There have been many, many studies on this. There are many words for it. I call it sustainable intensification. It's getting high yield from the land, but doing it in a way which has a low impact. That's one very important way to do that. Another very important way to achieve that. Uh, is to do the same sort of thing with all the pesticides we use. Only use them when they're really needed. Add the least amount you can ever have to be effective with them. And try to find other ways to control pests. There have been some very interesting studies that show that by growing alternate rows of crops, or many rows a meter or so wide of one crop and a meter of another, that by doing that, the plants are further apart from plants that are like them. And because of that, Disease incidents on plants like fungal diseases become less common. In fact, in one important study in China, they were able to get rid of having to buy an expensive fungicide, which is also toxic to people, by growing two different varieties of rice in alternate rows. Their yield didn't go down, but they saved money and they saved human health by doing this. And so we have to be more creative in actually using diversity. As a better part of agriculture. The other way we can use it in agriculture is what's called intercropping, where you deliberately choose two species that are ecologically different from each other and grow them in alternative、uh, strips.、Uh, and the typical, if we, for the kinds of crops for which it has been successful, farmers often get 20 to 30 percent more food off a hectare of land than if they grew just one or just the other. It's done in many areas of China, but it's almost not practiced in most of the world. We have to take it seriously and really look into that and see what combinations of crops really can help us in other parts of the world. So, that's, these are the kinds of things that, that h a s to be done on the production side of agriculture. On the consumption side, it's a little bit harder because it comes down to the decisions that almost 8 billion people make every meal every day. So, what we need people to do、uh, is to eat foods that are healthier for themselves and which at that same time are also better for the environment. So, dietary shifts away from a meat heavy diet, especially red meats, toward let's say fish instead of red meat. That's a big benefit.、Um, going from that、uh, down to、um, chicken,、uh, which is another benefit.、Um, going to Um, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, very healthy foods with low environmental impact.、Um, so it's a win win. Consumers uh, can um, have healthier diets at the same time that they're actually helping the world. Now, we're only going to do this if it tastes really good. No one's going to eat something that tastes bad because it's healthy, not for very long. That's not how humans are. But the good news is, there are so many cultures. The Japanese culture and your wonderful foods, they're famous around the world for how delicious and healthy they are.、And、the same is true for Italian food and Greek food.、Uh, and uh, even some, uh, some foods,、uh, let's say from parts of India, are, are famous for how delicious they are and how healthy they are. So, what we need are、uh, people who are getting more acquainted with these kinds of healthy foods. We need、uh, 
businesses that decide they can make more money by selling healthy foods to people and making it delicious than they can in another way. And I think if we do this, we can sort of slowly change our culture and have us have foods that we truly love. Like I truly love vegetables, I love fruit, I love nuts, and I love fish. Those are things I really love and anything which has those, some of those things in them, I just enjoy eating. And whenever I go to a restaurant that is a food I like, I try to get the recipe and, and, and have it and, and, and share it with my friends. So I think if we can do this, if we can treat food like it is, it's a wonderful thing for us. It's just it's a gift for us to have these incredible crops we can eat. But we need to make sure that we also uh, have it be a gift for the world when, when we make our decisions. で、もう一つ聞きたいんですけども、農業が大変悪いあ、役割をしている。今の農業がってことですが、その工業の方が普通の人はもっと悪いというふうに思っていると思います。で、農業と工業のま、悪さの比較をしてもしょうがないですが、
どうしてそうしたその幅広いものの見方を身につけたんでしょうか That's a very good question, and it,、uh, it's one that has caused me to think about this. And it comes down to the reality, the unique situation of humanity right now. For thousands of years, what we did barely mattered. We were a small part of the world, and we were not very powerful. But over the last several hundred years, we have become the most powerful organism on Earth. And I started out trying to understand. Uh, uh, small issues. And every time I looked at that small issue, let's say I, I looked at, at、uh, agriculture and how it harmed the environment. Well, it's not such a small issue. People have to eat. I kept coming back to sort of my central issue, my central ethic was I felt that we could not solve environmental, environmental problems unless we solved people problems at the same time and we made the world a better place in all manner. So, I first looked at agriculture and how it caused water pollution、uh, and、uh, how it caused land clearing and threatened species with extinction.、Um, and then I came, came concerned because people were turning fertile cropland into places to grow biofuels. And、um, I wondered about biofuels. And we explored biofuels and we found out something which really helped me appreciate how interlinked these issues are. You would imagine if you grew a crop. And you use a crop to make energy that you burn to power a car or to make electricity, that'd be good because the crop takes carbon dioxide out of the air, it goes into the plant. When you burn it, it goes back in the air. It should be carbon neutral, no net effect.、Um, but when we explored it, there were lots of other things going on. And the total effect of almost every biofuel is that they actually are worse for greenhouse gases. Than burning gasoline or diesel. That's hard to believe something is worse than them, but it actually is. And it's worse ultimately mainly because to grow a biofuel, you have to use land. That land either had been used for food and now isn't, which means people have to grow their food someplace else. To grow food someplace else, you have to clear the land and all the carbon that was in that plant, so lots of the carbon in the soil, goes in the air as carbon dioxide. And there's so much of that released. When you clear land, that biofuels are worse than, than the things they were replacing. So that was a lesson to me about how these things are all linked food, health, uh, diet, um, energy policies, land use policies, they all are interlinked. And with so many people being as rich as we are, we have to take a multi dimensional look, because otherwise, when we solve one problem, we will create another one. And we have to find these rare solutions. And diet is one of them, where we do one thing and it has many, many good things that come from it. Thank you very much. The time is now over. The time is 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 over. First, let's imagine what it's like to be a young person. You have all these pressures in your life. You have the pressure that it takes to gain the education you need. You must choose what kind of career you want to have. And then you have to go out and somehow earn your own money and live on your own. These are hard times for everyone. And I think it's only natural、uh, that people in that stage of their life、uh, focus on all the details of the things they have to do、uh, to make it out in the real world. But it's also important for all of us to stand back every now and then and take a look at the big picture. Let's remember where we live. Earth is the only livable planet humans will ever have. Any other planet would live in a little dome、uh, in a very sparse life, and it would not be a life like living on Earth. Earth is a place we were made for. We live here, this is our home. And we also have to realize that we right now live in the golden age of humanity. No one else has ever had the quality of life s that we enjoy now. If you went back 300 years or 400 years to the、uh, kings and emperors, they could never imagine the kinds of things that we can enjoy every day. Our lives are so rich and so full. And I think when we look at life that way, we have to also ask ourselves are we leaving? An equally rich and full life for all future generations. 
So I would ask uh, young people starting their lives out to do a few simple things. They may not care that much about the environment or know that much about it, but there are a few simple things you can do in your life which really matter. One is choosing what you eat. Eat foods that are good for you and are good for the environment. There are wonderful, delicious, fabulous foods out there you can learn about and explore, learn how to cook them and have all that fun. And also, think about energy that you use and think about how you can be more efficient in that. These are two little ways, but something, a little thing done by 8 billion people has a huge global impact. So I would encourage them, uh, find their careers, find their, uh, the loves of their life, live their life, but along the way, do some of those little things every day that make such a big difference. Thank you. Thank you very much for your good uh, answer.